Hi everyone, I'm here at Diversity Tattoo where I'm getting ready to do a chat interview with a breast cancer survivor and use the resource that's here at the Diversity Tattoo and had her breast tattooed. It's so beautiful and I'm here to talk with her about her experience and why she decided to uh, form a 501c3 ink ribbon foundation around this very necessary, uh, I don't know what to call it, uh, it I think it just may, would make any woman feel so much better to have this done. So we're going to talk to her a little bit about that and let's go inside. Hi everybody, I am here at the Diversity Tattoo Shop with my friend Kim Matty um, and I am going to be speaking with Kim about a foundation that she set up called the Ink Ribbon Foundation. It is set up uh, to help women who have had uh, mastectomies um, get beautiful tattoos. And she's going to tell us more about that. But first, I wanted to thank you, Maddie, for allowing me. This is so personal. And I really appreciate that you trusted me to come out and do this. Um, why don't you just tell me a little bit about the history of it all? What year you ca had breast cancer and all of that? Uh, sure, yeah. So I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2012, July of 2012. Um, so uh, coming up on my five-year cancer-free anniversary, wow. I was uh, just 41 years old when I was diagnosed. And um, of course, it's very devastating getting that news. Um, you're just overwhelmed with um, emotion and then you have doctors coming at you from all over the place. You, you know, this uh, breast cancer awareness, um, you're not aware of breast cancer until you go through breast cancer. So um, I didn't know a whole lot. I did a lot of my own research, um, chose my types of treatment options, um, but uh, part of the healing process is um, deciding whether you want to get um, reconstructive surgery after mastectomy. Um, I chose reconstructive surgery, um, but there's, it still goes beyond that, and you're still not whole as a woman um, after your mastectomy. So. Um, doing a little more research, I found uh, beautiful mastectomy scar cover-up uh, tattoos online, mm -hmm. and I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that was for me. That's what I wanted to do. Well, let me, let me back up a little bit. How did you discover you had breast cancer? Was it in a routine exam? It was. I felt my lump doing a routine monthly exam, and um, I knew it wasn't supposed to be there. I mean, we know our bodies as women, and um, I just felt something that had not been there before. Um, it had not been there my previous year when I had my ma mammogram, um, and it just showed up and um, went right away to get a mammogram and ultrasound and uh, was diagnosed shortly thereafter. Was it a big tumor, if I can say that? It was two centimeters, uh -huh. um, and so they concluded that that was stage two breast cancer okay. at the time. Um, but during my mastectomy, um, they found another tumor, um, and also I had lymph node involvement, so they had to remove my lymph nodes on my right side as well. So it was all on my right side. Um, however, I chose a double mastectomy. Now, did breast cancer run in your family? No, ma'am. Um, it was, uh, as my doctor called it, a fluke. Um, breast cancer did not run in my family. I had very low risk factors overall. Um, he was even a little surprised um, that I had it. I was very young. Um, a lot has to do with your cycles, your menstrual cycle and all of that. I had three beautiful daughters. Um, all of that had to play in it, but um, very low risk factors, um, plus my age, of course. Well, let me ask you, and I, again, you know, I, I, I'm going to get a little personal, and I hope that's okay, but okay, so you discover you have breast cancer, and you, you, they tell you you're going to have to have a mastectomy. I'm just curious, um, like I told you, I went through cancer with my husband, and it's just so devastating, and he was one of these people who just 
I'm taking this on and I'm going to make it. I'm going to do whatever I can. And, and literally, his radiation place was across the street from his job. He worked in a hospital. And he walked. And I'd be like, no, let me come and get you and take you. He's like, no, I need to do this. Is that the kind of feeling you get like when you say, I'm going to embrace this, I'm going to manage it, I'm going to do what I got to do? Do you just kind of take on this warrior attitude of, you know? Um, I think it's different for everyone. Um, that was definitely the type of attitude I took on. I did, um, again, I didn't know anybody to have breast cancer. I couldn't go to anyone to ask, um, you know, personal stories. Um, so I just did a lot of my own research and Google was my friend and yeah. I just Googled everything. Um, I have a wonderful sister-in-law who is a medical professional. Okay. So I'd ask her a lot of questions and what do these test results mean and what, it, you know, can you explain that in, you know, layman's terms to me and she would go through it and her mother um, incidentally had breast cancer as well um, years ago. So um, she was very... Uh, helpful in that whole process, um, helping me to decide um, the proper course of treatment to take. Yeah, yeah. so how soon after uh, the discovery and the, the diagnosis did you have your surgery? Um, so I was diagnosed on July 25th of mm -hmm. 2012 and on September 12th of 2012 is when um, I had my double mastectomy. Okay, wow. Yeah. You know, I, and I'm not familiar, forgive me, and I'm sure a lot of our audience aren't f familiar either with the process, but um, leading up to your surgery, are you having to do a lot of prep things? Um, is that what, why it takes a month or two months or whatever it was to get you in there for surgery? Yes, um, you know, you have to meet with your oncologist before, um, and every, there's actually 12 different types of breast cancer. Um, yeah, so um, they had to determine what type of breast cancer I had first. Um, and and what that, type was it? Um, mine is called hormone positive breast cancer. So I was progesterone and estrogen um, related breast cancer. Okay. Um, mine was not, um, uh, there's another type that's called DCIS breast cancer, and that is a non invasive form of breast cancer. I had the invasive form. Oh, wow. So my official diagnosis is invasive ductal carcinoma. Um, stage 2B is what it ended up being. Um, and so you have to discuss between your surgeons, your oncologist, um, and your uh, gynecologist uh, what is the proper course of treatment. So they give you several options, um, and I had to choose. I could have chose a lumpectomy. Um, initially is what they were saying I could choose, but um, once they got in, they discovered that wouldn't have been a possibility okay. either way. So, um, yeah, there was a lot to determine prior going into the, uh, to the mastectomy process. Well, you know, I mean, we all know someone who's had breast cancer, or even had mastectomies and stuff, but it, even in my many, many years and many, many friends that have had that happen, I just never really knew the process, you know, because a lot of people, they do kind of just go into hiding and, and, and so they don't really communicate what's going on in between. And you see them later, the surgery has happened, and that's when you see them. So I appreciate you sharing that because I know a lot of people are just curious uh, what you go through beforehand. Yeah, you know, and some women have to get chemo before surgery really? um, in order to shrink tumors before they wow. go in. Um, and then some women choose other alternative methods to um, try to battle their cancer, you know, via holistic approaches, um, that type of thing. I just say whatever works for you, yeah. you know. Um, I just stuck with my doctors and um, really consulted with them. A lot of my own research as well and what I thought would uh, work best for me and my family. So you never even considered any of some of the things we hear, go here to this country and no. try all these. You were <laughs> like, no. No, that wouldn't have been an option for me. Um, I have uh, three daughters. Yeah. Um, they were um, fairly young at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, you know, my main goal was just I needed to make it around to see my daughters grow up. Yeah. And, and um, however that was going to happen for me, I expressed that to my doctors and said, look, just keep me around so I can see my daughters grow up. Whatever we have to do, I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my husband just wanted to see, or, or that's my son. Yeah. Um, I, I totally get that. Now, you say you have three daughters, so... I know you must have a lot of concern um, 
I mean, you said it wasn't running in your family, but now, but now it does. <laughs> yeah, now you have concern about that, oh. and I'm sure they're very educated on breast cancer, yes, breast care, <laughs> stuff like that. And um, you know, I have to just step aside here and say to you, you are just so you're smiling. I can tell you own this because in owning it, it, it's not as scary, it's not as frightening, it's not as overwhelming, at least I would think. Well, it's a part of my life now, um, so it, it, I have to accept it, um, so I might as well run with it. And um, in all of this process, um, now I'm helping to encourage other women, um, and with the foundation now, of course, now we're gonna be able to truly help other women through this um, very scary and emotionally draining, physically draining process. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, for me, it was um, a year and a half's worth of treatments and surgeries and chemo and you know everything that you um, kind of associate with cancer. Yeah. Losing the hair and yeah, all and of all of that. Yeah, losing yeah. your your parts. Um, you know, it's. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's not really an amputation, but talk to the women that's had it. Well, it's, women, that's, it is. That's, <laughs> that's who we are. Yes. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of things you could probably take away from me, <laughs> and I might even say take them out, right. like this roll of fat. <laughs> yes. But, I mean, our breast, that's from the time we're young. Yeah. That's a part of our femininity, and so it's I totally. It's part of our motherhood. Motherhood, childbearing, everything, yes. everything, <laughs> everything. Um, but yeah, you have such an amazing attitude and I was looking at you on your little trip and you just, you know, I kept looking, I, I really did look, went on your page several times just to look at your pictures from this trip you were on and you just looked happy and, you know, what else can you be, right? You're here. Yes. <laughs> you know? And, you know, I, I thank God every day. Um, every day I wake up and I have to thank the man upstairs. Um, you know, there was a time where you wonder, am I going to be around? Yeah. Um, yeah. So you do... Um, I'm not going to say everyone, but for me personally, I do have a different outlook on life, and I am going to live life to the fullest, and I am not going to have any regrets anymore, and um, I'm not going to hold back from anything. I'm going to approach everything in my life with a, a more appreciation, more That's gratitude. gratitude. Mm -hmm. So um, when did you start like feeling to where you could get out and, and, and do stuff and you just felt better? I mean, well, how, how long before that happened? Um, well, um, gosh, <laughs> it really mm. took me quite some time. Um, I was going through a lot in my personal life as well. Um, went through a divorce after all oh. of this process as well. Oh um, so that took a little while to kind of get going. Mm -hmm. And um, But once I really started um, discovering these mastectomy tattoos. I started going in and, and doing the research and I had um, consultations with several artists and I knew that this was something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. However, after a few consultations with a few artists, um, I didn't think I'd ever gonna be able to afford it. Yeah. So, um, but I still kept going and um, I then lost my job and that oh. was <laughs> very crazy. Oh yeah, so there was just a lot going yeah. on. So um, When it rains, it pours, right? It really does, it really yeah. does. But um, I really, I stayed in faith and mm -hmm. that was important to me mm -hmm. and um, just kind of chugged through. And I, I can honestly say it really wasn't until um, last year that I really kind of started coming out and saying, look, this is what I want to do. I'm going to make it happen somehow or another. You know, I'm going to find an amazing job and then I'm going to get my tattoos done and then, you know, life is going to be beautiful. <laughs> and hey, that's pretty much how it works. <laughs> the, law, the law of intention. Yes. I totally <laughs> believe in that. I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, write a blog about that. Um, well, um, I want to definitely talk about the foundation, but before we do that, I'm going to ask, uh, we're going to take a little break, and I'm going to have um, Kim's daughter come in, and we're going to chat with her for just a little bit about uh, her view. I'm here with Taylor, Kim's daughter, and I wanted to speak with Taylor because I wanted to get her vantage point on what her mom has been through. What, it, what she went through, supporting her mother through all of this. And so, Taylor, um, just the reaction when your mom shared with you that what she was going to be dealing with. I was in fourth grade, so I didn't, I didn't know what this was. She 
we had a conversation like after dinner and she was like me and all my sisters and my dad were around and we were like she said do you know what breast cancer is and then my two sisters started bawling and I was really confused I had no idea what it was and I like I kind of knew what it was like I've heard about it because like my family's a football family so I saw it like during October during the oh, breast yeah, cancer yeah, yeah, awareness yeah, yeah. and so like I had a clue but like I didn't understand what was going on and everyone was crying and I was really shocked after I found out but I still didn't realize what was what she was going to go through that's just mm -hmm. and my fourth grade teacher she was actually there for me a lot during that and on the last day of school I cried because like she was there for me a lot yeah during that and then now you were going to another school you weren't going to see her anymore it was summertime no it was summertime okay. yeah Wow. I'll tell you, I can't imagine uh, how scary that is. I know my son, uh, when my husband got cancer, it, it's just devastating, you know, and, and he's my only child, and, and we were married 38 years, and so he had this amazing father for most of his life, and you wouldn't believe it, but he's 28. Mm. <laughs> I know he doesn't look <laughs> like it, but, you know, it's really hard on the kids because you don't understand that person's been there all your life mm -hmm. just a steady rock and now you have to worry is this person going to be here anymore yeah. um when she went to have the surgery well back up um when she was going through the prep and everything like that mm -hmm. um how did you handle that because i know she wasn't coming home strength and things yeah. like that were kind of she my mom is like the strongest person i know and so she like bared through everything so that it didn't seem so scary on my part oh, so wow. I didn't know what was happening like she told me she had breast cancer but like I didn't realize and like she made it seem like she's gonna power through this mm -hmm. she's gonna do this and I don't have to worry about anything wow. and just like the prepping like I was so little I didn't realize what was going on and she, like some days she would just come home and she'd be like out of it like it was <laughs> yeah, I can't look. I know, I know, I know. Okay, so she gets the surgery, and we're all happy because she made it through, right? And she's doing good. And so during that period of recovery, did your life change in terms of what you had, I'm sure, around the house and things that she did, you and your sisters took those things over for her? Yeah. Um, but how was it, and when she got home and everything, how was it helping her? keeping your emotions intact so she wouldn't get upset, making sure she knew that, Mom, we got this, don't worry about the bills and the house and the da da da, -da right? Because I'm sure yeah. she was worried about everything. She looks like that kind of person that would be worrying about everything. Um, so how was it uh, in the home at that time when she got back? Um, it was different because she wasn't the mom that was so upbeat anymore. She was down and laying around. Ugh. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Probably been waiting to get out of you for some time now. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be in the chat. With the <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead, honey. Take yeah, but she was like, she was always in bed and she didn't feel like doing things that she would normally do anymore. It was really hard, but I tried being there. Like, uh, I would help making her lunch and stuff if she could eat that day. And she would like fall asleep while we watched TV together and mm -hmm. stuff. And I would lay there with her and, until she got up. So there was always a sign that this wasn't the mom of before. Mm -hmm. Just thing, little things like that when you said you'd be watching TV and she'd fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, you know, they just go through so much and there's so many meds and different things like that. Um, how did you keep it together around her or were you able to because I know as a mom I'm most moms are more concerned for their kids even though they're the ones going through everything because we just want you to be okay and happy and live your life and it's hard to go back to to normal how did you go back to normal eventually go my mom like I said she's super strong so she kept me motivated even when she couldn't keep herself and like she just helped me through that whole thing and bringing myself back was all because of her and bringing the family back was because of we all stuck together wow 
wow. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Um, sorry. <laughs> um, well, you are such a strong young lady. And, and I'm glad that, that you were able to get out some of the things that I know you've been holding in because nobody wants to go back and revisit and have those conversations like you just had and say, Mom, you know, this was tough or I, you know. So I'm glad you got to say that. Um, so moving forward, um, like your mom said, it's all about life and gratitude and being happy. And, and look, every morning that I wake up with a roof over my head and some food in my refrigerator, I'm a happy chick. <laughs> you know, you start to look at the little things that you have to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. But you have such a big thing. She is amazing. I follow her, her strength, her ability to go out there and just still live life, positive attitude. And she communicates that in her Facebook and all of that and I followed her longer than she would ever even imagine um, and wanted to talk to her and just didn't know how to approach it because and then she popped those pictures up I was like okay she's ready to talk <laughs> and that's when I, I reached out to her but Taylor I tell you um, what a strong young woman you are and you get to be an, an advocate and you get to be that young girl who when you you get to be a mentor for girls who might be going through any type of illness or something with their family and I encourage you to do that because you get it and the, your words will be so helpful to other young people that are going through something like this so I really appreciate you sharing your feelings mm -hmm. and, and everything with us, and, and I can see you're just doing well, and you're a beautiful girl. <laughs> I already you. told her she looked like Britney Spears. <laughs> um, but um, you hang in there and just keep being the beautiful daughter that you are, and I appreciate you talking with us mm -hmm. on camera, okay? Yeah, All much. right, honey. Thank you so much. Okay, so I am here again with Kim after the emotional conversation with her daughter. She's just so sweet. Um, Kim has started a foundation. It's called the Ink Ribbon Foundation. And uh, Kim, go ahead and, and, and tell us why you started it and um, what exactly it does. Well, um, a as I was doing my research for a mastectomy scar cover-up tattoo, um, I saw a couple of programs um, on the East Coast um, that did provide women with some grants um, to go ahead and get the scar cover-up tattoos or the 3D areola restorative tattoos. Um, all of these tattoos, including the 3D areola restorative tattoos, which would make a woman look and appear um, as they did pr pre mastectomy you mean nipples yes yeah, nipples, nipples. Wow. <laughs> um, most women get that's the traditional route to go so you get a nipple tattooed mm -hmm. onto your reconstructed breast but insurance does not cover that um, yes which is pretty crazy to me um, but I was looking at some of these other um, uh, organizations um, and they're providing grants to get you know women these uh, procedures done um, there was nothing like that here in Las Vegas. Um, as I was going around and getting quotes from other places um, and realizing how expensive these things can run, right. um, you know, between myself and my artist Tank, we thought we need to do something here in Las Vegas. We have 2.5 million people here, yeah. and a lot of and a lot of breast cancer uh, survivors and patients. And um, I thought, what better way to um, provide uh, some hope, uh, a little light at the end of the tunnel for other breast cancer survivors than mm -hmm. to be able to provide this service for people. So um, that's what we're gonna do. Um, it's gonna be a whole experience. They're mm -hmm. not only gonna get a tattoo, they're gonna get a professional hair and makeup uh, session and a full photo shoot of oh, their experience, wow. um, just like I had done. Um, that way they can document their journey. And I think it's very important for women to document their journeys. Mm -hmm. um, I was pretty quiet during my treatments, but um, said during this uh, mastectomy tattooing process, I wanted to show the world that this is a this yeah. is a thing. This is what people want to do. 
um, it was my first tattoo, so it was very... Um, wow, you went big. Yeah, you know, go big <laughs> or go home, right? So um, it was interesting, me walking into a diversity tattoo for the first time. You know, I look like every other soccer mom out there, yeah. you know? Um, and meeting with Tank and going through the consultation process and... Um, um, now I'm we walk in today and my daughter says this is like my home to me we've been here so often now oh, wow. <laughs> um, we love this place we love everyone in it um, they've really helped us out and encouraging Ink Ribbon Foundation yeah. as well so it's perfect Wow. well mm -hmm. I'll tell you and we're gonna sh be showing some pictures that you sent us and um, you had some other pictures on your site are those pictures um, that we're able to show as well? Um, they are um, of other um, people that have gotten mastectomy tattoos, mm -hmm. not here in Vegas. Okay. They're, I'm just pulling them from other um, tattoo shops or other women that have had it done. Okay. Um, so I think you're allowed to use those as long as you're using their names. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, because some of them, I mean, they're all, your tattoos are, your tattoo is unique. It's beautiful. But then some of the other ones too were just so unique. and. And you know, I can't wait to talk to Tank to find out how that experience is for him. You know, one, to do it. Two, to know what he's providing somebody with a new hope, a new outlook on life and everything like that. Yeah. Now, um, your organization just got started. Correct. Um, and you are a 501c3 organization. Correct. Uh, which is really important. So if you're donating money to it, you want to know that you know the people that donate can get that tax write-off they may need, or yeah. any of the things that you may need when you open your office or whatever. That those will be write-offs, and that's important when you're doing this from your heart and not from your pocket. Right. You know, <laughs> so you need everything you can get. Um, what are your hopes uh, for the organization? I mean, I know you want to provide the services that you just mentioned, but if it turned out like the one that you envision in your dreams, what does that look like? Um, well, you know, I, I live in Las Vegas. Um, I've been here for 23 years. Um, so right now it's helping women in Las Vegas. But thinking on the big picture, um, I'd want to help everyone around the yeah. country um, and have, um, you know, satellite operations in, in every major city to help women with this. It's a, it's a, it's a real thing, and it's not only, I always say, it, it healed me from the inside out. Yeah. Um, it just gave me a new outlook on life. A it gave purpose. me a new, new confidence yeah. Yeah. about myself. Um, you know, when you look at scars, very eight-inch scars. I had two eight-inch long scars across my chest, yeah. and um, it's not a nice thing to look at every day. And this was, for me, something that I knew was going to get my confidence back not only as a woman, but just as a person in general. And to be out there and be an advocate for this type of very non-traditional type of, um, of, of healing process, mm -hmm. um, it's important for me. Um, you know, like I said, I'm a typical soccer mom. You know, I'm not, I'm not out there, you know, with the all these tattoos everywhere. Yeah. However, I do love them now. Yeah. I got another one. <laughs> I did get another one. This was my Mother's Day present oh, from my daughter. Wow. What so does it say? It says I love you more. That was my Mother's Day present Aww. from my daughters this year. So, so sweet. Um, that was kind of neat. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to be, you know, covered in tattoos. I'm still yeah. going to, you sure? know, I don't think so. You Maybe. already went for, for two. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens in the long run. Um, but yeah, ultimately we loved um, just more exposure about yeah. this type of healing process. Mm -hmm. um, breast cancer in and of itself is so taboo still in this day and age. Mm -hmm. um, people don't like to talk about it. They don't. And, and the companies that are talking about it, the um, quote unquote pink ribbon companies, um, and their companies, they're not nonprofits. Non um, they, um, they are for profit, and they're no, no pink ribbon company helped me out during my time of need. Have you ever asked a pink ribbon company to help you or give you a donation? Um, no, I mean, I, I didn't ask because um, I had already done my research, I had already done my Google, and I'm like, well, there's, they, there's nothing that they can do for me. Um, and going this non-traditional route, I knew nobody was going to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to help you get your, you know, scar cover-up tattoos because mm -hmm. you want, you know, cherry blossoms on your chest, you yeah, know. They don't, they don't They're not going to do that. They're not mm -hmm. going to do that. So, um, no, um, I, I 
and that's why I chose the name Ink Ribbon Foundation because the pink ribbon, uh, I don't have a good uh, association with the pink yeah. ribbon companies. That's really interesting that yeah. you say that because I know with, well, I won't mention the name, but you know the big the pink big ribbon one. places. <laughs> and I've done the walks for years mm -hmm. and I've been involved and I've given money. And I just kind of wondered sometimes, of where is this money going? Oh, I did the research, and very, very little is going towards actual research and going towards actual patients okay. to help the patients. And the one breast cancer um, that is not curable is stage four breast cancer. That's where the money really needs to go, yeah. in my opinion. We need more research on that. Why can't we cure this one type of breast cancer? Um, so um, this is just my small, small contribution to this whole big breast cancer world that um, people just don't want to talk about. They want to talk about save the tatas, and yeah. I want to talk about let's save a life. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Absolutely, yeah. what you just said is, is all it should be about, Yeah, you know? Um, so have you approached any of the um, organizations uh, to partner or support you, not the big the big ri ribbon ones, but I mean just local places like you have Tank now, are you gonna start going around and adding on some more resources? Yeah, I mean, um, that would be the ultimate go goal. I would love to um, even go to plastic surgeons' offices, okay. um, you know, put our information out there if this was something that they wanted to do. Um, there is a trend where um, some of the medical professionals are doing the nipple tattooing. Mm -hmm. um, they're not tattoo artists. Yeah, they should they're be doctors. Um, so we say let doctors doctor and yeah. let tattooists tattoo. And um, you know, they're not trained, they're not professional in this type of art form. Yeah. Um, and they're just gonna put a circle on there and call it a day and then you're not happy you at the end of the day. You know what's interesting you say that my mother-in-law has uh, tattooed on mm -hmm. nipples. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, 80 or whatever. Um, I just remembered that because she did that all, it was happening many, many years ago. Um, but I, I think the, that your brain is just so clicked in to your purpose and where you're headed with this. And the strength, I mean, I can imagine I'm the person in the office, you're coming in to see me about partnering or whatever. You, you, you're a force to be reckoned with, girl. I'm going to tell you right now. You're going to walk through that door, and they're going to be like, okay, what do you want? But, you know, when you establish those relationships, and some people have to sit back and watch how you do. When you start a nonprofit, everybody wants to make sure you're legit and you're not just out here doing da-da-da-da. Um, but you're walking in there with something so important. And a partnership with plastic surgeons, a partnership with gynecologist, a partnership with anybody who's touching a woman's life or touches uh, the life of a, of a breast cancer survivor. Or, um, I mean, I think that there's probably other things that aren't even related to breast cancer that a person might have happen. Yeah. It could be I, a car accident. I mean, I'm oh. thinking even eventually um, doing scar cover-up tattoos yeah. for, you know, any, any type of scar that mm -hmm. you have had. I mean, um, you know, some people get very creative and uh, tattoo like a zipper going yeah. up, you know, where, yeah. their, where their scar was or, or something like cool. that. You know, um, you know the, the, the imagination is limitless yeah. as far as what kind of design you want. Um, and some people like to um, kind of poke fun at yeah. themselves yeah. And, and, you know, put a little sense of humor behind their tattoo cover-ups. Um, some women, um, especially with mastectomy, um, they love the pink ribbon and mm -hmm. that's great. Um, and they want to get a pink ribbon um, put on themselves somewhere in a tattoo. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great, too. Yeah. Whatever, you know, the sky is the limit. Yes. Whatever makes you feel good, mm -hmm. whatever makes you feel whole again and healthy. And so you can look at yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and smile. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I just listening to you, I know you're going to be successful with this. Thank you. You have such a, a good character and integrity, and you're speaking from a place that people know. Uh, this is coming from your heart, despite what you've been through, you know, yeah. and you, this is a passion for you. I'm going to get the big guy in here <laughs> and ask him how he got hooked up with you and what it makes him feel like. And so we'll be right back with Tank. Hey, everybody, we're back, and I am here with the man himself, the tattoo guru, Tank. 
and uh, Tank works here at Diversity Tattoo, and he is the angel that floated into Kim's life and uh, did her breast tattoos, which are beautiful, and we've shown you the pictures and everything. Um, you know, Tank, you look like a big, rough guy. So I'm thinking, here comes this woman. <laughs> she, she needs some delicate flowers, uh, you know, some kind of a tattoo. Was that the first time you've ever done that? No, I've done uh, scar cover-ups and stuff like that in the past to the extent of what Kim had wanted. That was my first time going with that, yeah. Okay. So who came up with the design? Uh, you or her and the color scheme and, you know, all of that? I think the design base was from her. And then from there, it's just more of a collaborative collective as far as her and I working together and working with the designs as far as how it's going to go, how it's going to flow, and then whether we're going to stay black and gray or go color, and then to what extent of color we would go. And then from there, it's just me doing what I do. Wow. So you draw everything out on mm -hmm. her, and then, like, she's telling you, I want uh, purple here or whatever color there, and... Um, how I mean like do you do it in sections how does yes um, initially it was a couple consultations just to sort of get some ideas and stuff sketching from there I'll actually design it and then I design it on a paper that we can actually conform to her and oh. tape on to make sure that everything's gonna look how she wants it to look and yeah. lay up right and if I need to make alterations then I can. do you do that with with just regular tattoos you put the paper on and I mean, not really this is my ignorance how does the, <laughs> I mean, you're not just free falling, like, okay, I'm going to start over here. Sometimes, you draw, yeah. Really? Yeah. I said, but but uh, you draw the design and mm -hmm. fill it in, right? Yeah, with something as, as intricate and in-depth as what Kim was doing, it was something we wanted to make sure was exactly right and going to lay and cover what we needed it to cover and look good for her. Mm -hmm. I mean, just for her herself as well as just generally in aesthetic. Yeah, because, I mean, if I recall the pictures, it's like you have to start – the two sides are similar, right? They they actually appearingly connect because it is one solid piece. Mm -hmm. Kim's deal was she did not want anything in the middle, so that's where I connected and used some of the background and some wind flowing and things in nature to get rid of that, but then seemingly still have it be seamless going from one side to the other. Well, I'll tell you what, it's amazing. It's amazing. And, and I can see how someone who goes through what Kim went through and just thinks, Oh my God, you know, and and forgive me if, if I'm wrong for saying that, but you know, I'm not loving this. I don't want to be seen by anybody. I don't want a man looking at me. And then you provide this service that just takes it and makes it like a beautiful bra. I mean, really, that's the first thing I thought. I thought, wow, a tattoo bra, you know, and, yeah. and it just is so beautiful. And, you know, so when I saw you, I was like, wow. Look at how delicate you are with your little hands and everything. I mean, that is some good stuff. Um, but what does it mean to you now that you know, you know you're going to be in, and she ain't going to let you go. Oh, what no. does it mean to you that you can be a part of what she's starting up with her foundation and everything? I think equally for me, it's a life-changing experience because, I mean, we get into tattooing with the thoughts of, being able to help people through things, whether it be a case of memorial tattoos or, or anything of the nature, yeah. commemorating an event, anything like that. But to be able to go to the extent of where we're gonna be able to go with this and to reach out and help the number of people out there, I mean, it's just, it's unreal just to think that it's like, you know, there's something that I can do is, is you know, easy as tattooing that can be that changing for somebody it's got to be really fulfilling for you oh it it's is like, it's, it's, it's like a new purpose for you you know in terms of wow look what i get to provide everybody you and know? it is and that is something it's for me is it that i i get the opportunity to be able to do this you know and sometimes you can go in and just go get a tattoo from somebody and it's not that big of a deal stuff like this it's very big deal it's a very big deal for them their friends their family stuff like that and to be able to be the one chosen to walk and finish up those chapters of that path with them mm -hmm. is a it's a really big deal that. that that's really i mean what it's all about i think that from your end from your standpoint that's what you're getting now i have a question so 
because you know this is just gonna burst out there's gonna be like two billion viewers and they're all gonna be calling you and everything and they're gonna want to <laughs> have some questions answered like where do you do that i mean they're not laying here all day yeah right here in the states and we're filming and i have privacy curtains that we stick up oh, and okay. stuff goes because you know and it, you know there's there's different levels of it i mean for some ladies to come in it may be nothing to them because they don't have their you know specific lady stuff that's there mm -hmm. but but we initially and just directly get past that it's still a private session it's still something that needs to be private to them uh, yeah i mean what they choose to run around and show the world after yeah. that is entirely up to them yeah but when they're here we we you know we treat them with the best and with everything we can do and just make it as as easy and as comfortable as an experience as we can do well, you can't be that different from some of the crazy stuff we see well, no, people yeah, getting I mean, we, tattoos yeah, I mean, on, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just magic, and I think that she's so lucky to have found you and what you're delivering. And, and when she was telling me about you and how easy you made it for her to do this, you know, because, I mean, there's, a, there's an emotional part to it, and, and you need a support system. And she was saying that you just became a part of her support system and understood. And I mean, that's a huge compliment for you, Tank. I think you're gonna really be seeing a lot of people coming in who need that from you. And they see you're just a gentle bear and that's who they <laughs> want, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I just, I just wanna thank you because I think you're just to take the time to do this and perfect the art form for it as well. It's just uh, you know, wonderful. I mean, I don't know about perfecting the art form. I just, <laughs> I mean, there's there's plenty of people out there that are also, you know, engaged in this battle and stuff on their own. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of artists out there that have their own, their own approaches at it and things of nature. And, you know, I'm just glad to be, you know, part of the team that's there now being able to do what I can do to make things better and more beautiful in the world through ink. Well, you, you succeeded. You, you've done a great job and so um, I'm going to take a break and then what we're going to do is kind of all stand together and say goodbye to everybody and let Kim have some last words and uh, and wrap this up so all right everybody I I'm going to end this uh, show with my new friend Tank my new friend Taylor and my kind of new friend uh, Kim um, this was such an important shoot to do. I think anytime you can educate people and be informative, it's so important, and this is so important. There's so many women, and I guess some men too, that get breast cancer, who really need to know that they have something out here that might help them feel better. And that's what Tank is doing over here. And as you heard, uh, Kim is starting her Ink Ribbon Foundation, which is so important. And uh, we'll put up information, uh, her website, is so you can make donations and, and things like that. And it's going to be a great resource for information because I know you've researched a lot, so you're going to probably really have a lot of good stuff on there. And so we'll put all that information out, and you can check her site out. And uh, just appreciate so much that you let me come and get into your private life. I mean, you know. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, darling. And Taylor, you're just so sweet. You are so cute. And, and I, I admire your strength. And Tank, you're just like the sweetest guy. And look what you're doing. I mean, this is so important. It is so important. And for him to lend his time to it is even uh, more amazing. So I want to thank you guys for allowing me to come in. And I want to thank Diversity Tattoo for letting me come in and shoot in their shop. Um, and this show should be up in a couple of days, and I hope you all enjoy it. We'd love to hear how you, what you felt about it, and um, any comments, and definitely contact Kim if you want to know more about the Ink Ribbon Foundation. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Matt. All right. <laughs>